This is Twit. Adam Tyler said, Hi, Steve. I was curious if you or a listener have found a commercial version of the portable dog killer device. He says, I'm not really looking for a laser gun, but something that could sit on the fence line to deter a barking dog. Ideally, automatically activated and a battery design that made sense. Lithium ion with a little solar panel would be sweet. He said, anyway, love the podcast. Glad you're going past 999. I also only had a, an X slash Twitter account to DM you and am very happy to see you've moved over to email. Regards, Adam Tyler. Okay, so Adam is, of course, referring to one of this podcast's favorite podcasts past episodes, which we've re-aired a number of times through the years because it tells a fun story which ends with a moral of the surprising benefits that can arise from being active rather than passive. I first shared that youthful adventure of mine on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the laser. The device I designed and built when I was in high school was not a laser, though the beam of high-intensity directed sound energy it produced was likely coherent. Now, 12 years ago, back in 2012, when this podcast was only seven years old, I recreated that device after so many of our listeners commented that their neighbors' barking dogs were ruining their lives. <laughs> Since I didn't have the web forum technology running that I have today, I created a Google group called Portable Sound Blaster for public discussion of this, and I published the final electronic design of the device which I had created on a page at GRC, naming the project The Quiet Canine. If you're curious, you can find it under GRC's website menu under Other, and down at the bottom is The Quiet Canine. I think you can also just Google The Quiet Canine, and it comes right to my page. Now, on that page, I wrote, The good news is that we arrived at an extremely simple, inexpensive, and easy-to-build design for a small, lightweight, and painfully loud handheld sound emitter and then the page shows the design but then under the caption the bad news i wrote many of these final tqc as in the quiet canine version 2.2.2 devices were assembled and tested by those following and participating in the portable sound blaster group at google the devices were invariably incredibly loud and high-pitched. While their dads were assembling and testing the devices downstairs in the garage, their, upsta their upstairs teenagers were complaining Ow. about the piercing sound <laughs> penetrating their heads. And of course, dogs were at least as well able to hear it and at much greater distances. But... In no event was this able to function as any sort of barking deterrent. Dogs heard it and at great distance, but they didn't care. <laughs> we soon came to appreciate that my own original point-blank blasting of the original portable dog killer, as I named my first device when I was in high school, was required for the device's effectiveness. No dog next door, let alone down the block, will care about a high-pitched sound. It needs to be blasted directly into the dog's face at a very short distance. Now this means that while this device would not be useful for silencing dogs at a distance, it would likely be extremely useful and effective as a personal defense device for people walking, postal workers on foot delivering mail, and joggers who are harassed and threatened by overly aggressive canines on the loose. Although we cannot and do not offer any specific guarantees, it's difficult to see how any attacking dog would not be stopped in its tracks by a close blast of incredibly loud and high-pitched sound, unquote. That's what the website says. So, the bottom line 
is my particular use case, which I described in that story, turned out to be unique. I specifically designed and used that first device back in the early 1970s to train an incredibly aggressive, I mean, really rapid mm -hmm. dog, not to jump on the fence which bordered the sidewalk, which was terrifying passers-by, causing them to fall off the sidewalk oh, into the street. I, I saw it happen a number of times, and that's what motivated me to, to basically train the dog not to run at strangers by blasting it in the face several times at point blank when it did that to me. And after a couple of days, it just kind of peered around the side of the house to see who was there. <laughs> oh, good. It, it became it, it completely changed its behavior. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below. Security Now.